Hey Wampers, in this video I'll teach you some of the basics of 3D using Wamp while making a fry deck. So feel free to join along and let's get started. So before we start modeling on this one, I want to change the backdrop to a lighter color because we're gonna work with a fairly dark color on the frying pan. So sometimes it can be good to change that from the beginning. So then I'm going to the objects menu to grab a cylinder primitive. Um, with the gizmo we can navigate it, hovering over the side handles we can scale it down to make it a flat cylinder. If our primitive is selected we can change the roundness in the objects properties menu at the right and also enter our materials menu. So I'm grabbing a fairly dark bluish color for the frying pan and I'm giving it some metalness as well as roughness. We can also save our material and give it a name so we can apply it to other things as well. Now next I'm going to simply copy this shape holding down Alt while dragging it out there. On a Mac that would be Shift. Now you see we have two shapes that are fairly rough together and we want to make it a bit more smooth by giving it a bit of goop strength. Now they're kind of blended together and I'm also reducing the roundness on the top one just to like refine the shape for the frying pan a little bit. Next up, I'm making one more copy. I am rescaling it a bit smaller from the center and I'm turning it into a negative. So now we are making a cut. I'm also increasing goop strength a little bit to smooth it out as well as scaling it up to make it more round. And I'm simply dragging it down there and here we go. We already have the nice kind of shape for the frying pan, the hole for it. Now all that's left is a handle, so for that we're going to grab a curve primitive. We can drag it outside of its union, so it's in the same one as the rest. And we can straight away apply our saved material. Now the first thing I do with curves is delete the second point, go to its settings, also just dragging it to the side so we can see better. I'm changing it to a cylinder form, I'm increasing roundness, density and reduce scoop strength to around 5. Now clicking on point 1 we can make change to our shape just like before, we can scale it down and we can also play around with the roundness here. Now for the handle I'm just starting with a, like a very small cylinder, you don't want to make it too thin. And then we're just bringing it in position at where the handle would start. If you hover over the corners of the primitive you can rotate it, so I'm rotating it upwards, making a copy, holding down Alt and just dragging it once again. Um, I'm making this go upwards even more and then the third point I'm going to make fairly straight again and just drag it to the right. Now in that way we create a really nice like flow or yeah just a curve for the handle. You can use as many curve points as you want and you can also scale some of them bigger or smaller if you want a difference in the thickness or just the size of the handle. Another thing that might be worth mentioning here is if your handle goes a little bit into the frying pan, the only thing we need to do is drag the curve above our negative primitive. In that way it is also subtracting that, because negatives are affecting everything above them in the scene list. So once we're happy with it, we just select all of our primitives and then we turn them into union and we just call them frying pan and we can close it down. So next up, we're going to create the egg or we can literally like fry the egg. For that, I'm getting out a new cylinder. I'm scaling it really small and thin once again. Also going for the full roundness here, this kind of part of our style here, the cute and stylized look. Um, for the color, I'm going for a very light yellowish grayish tone. Barely anything in real life is fully white, so that's why you want to give it a slight variation in its color. And I'm also giving it a bit of metalness, glass and very low roughness, so our material is fairly shiny and reflective a little bit. So once we have that, we simply copy it, but here once again we see it's fairly rough, not really gooping together, so that's what we want to change. We want to increase gooping and just make it really smooth. And from that point on, we can just make a few copies and form our egg shape really freely here. And I think in that way, we can also make it look very natural. But for the last one, we want to make one copy and we want to turn this into the yellow part of the egg. So for that, we're going back into the color menu. We also want to scale it a bit smaller maybe. Um, and for this one, we're going to choose a very strong yellow orangey tone. It slightly goes into orange as well. 
And now comes the fun part. We just bring it back down into the white of the egg and we just goop it into it. And I think it's really satisfying to watch. It's really where Womp is shining with how the engine works, how it's almost melting into the other shapes. And yeah, so once we're fully happy with what our creation looks like, we come to the lighting and the first thing I do is turn off the show grid, then choose a global lighting. This really changes a lot on how your creation is displayed, so play around with that. And once you've found the right one, you can also play around with its exposure. I'm going for a fairly low one here because I want to use individual lights. So I'm getting out a spherical light and I'm using that to create a bit more of a um, highlights on the creation itself. You can also play around with the color of the light as well as the exposure of it. So I'm actually going for one blue one and one pink one, both from each side, just to give it a bit of rim light. Once the creation is finished, we can click on publish at the top right. Here we can choose our thumbnail, type in the title, give it some hashtags. Feel free to give it the hashtag easy if you found this tutorial easy or if you enjoyed it. Um, you can share your WAMP, uh, choose your copyright settings and then just click on publish. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. We would love to see your versions of this on the Discover page. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.